So the only question true WoW players care about is what DPS are going to be at the top of the meters because being the top performing player in a video game is extremely, extremely important in life. I'm a Barbie girl! And since everyone is bored of Wrath of the GDKP Classic, CANNOT BE SERIOUS! Let's do something different today and go on a little investigation to find out what DPS are going to be good in Cataclysm Classic. I've spent a good part of a week researching forums, private server data, and talking to degenerates on Discord, and honestly at this point it feels like I'm back at school doing maths homework. So you guys have better appreciate this video because I worked my ass off in GCSE maths to get a B so I'd never have to look at a bar chart ever again. Now before we dive into my research and findings it's important to understand the limitations and problems of trying to make a tier list and get accurate DPS data. Honestly at this stage I can only really hope to be 75% accurate and even then things could turn out entirely different so take this information with a pinch of salt but nonetheless, this video will be useful in finding out at least what specs for every class are the ones that are going to be the best. So I've taken all of my DPS data from a private server's log data, which essentially works like Warcraft Log does. Now, this private server has very good scripting and a very good reputation in the community that I can't unfortunately name because Blizzard would probably channel strike me and end my career. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Now I've taken the data from the Blackwing Descent Raid of players with an average item level of 372, so full heroic gear. These are the kind of numbers people are pumping at the end of phase 1 in Cataclysm. Fortunately, the logs on this website count absolutely everything, so when people are padding the practice of inflating your DPS by attacking ads that you don't need to to inflate your own ego, this kind of thing will appear on the logs. But I've taken an average also of the fights that have less padding opportunities. We can also look at a pure single target tank and spank fight like Chimerion. But what counts as DPS on these logs will likely be very different to what counts on logs on Warcraft logs. And obviously private servers are a totally different product to classic WoW, scripting might be slightly different and there could be future class nerfs and buffs. Now we've got all the boring stuff out the way, let's actually look at the data. So guys, this is my big and beautiful results page. So as you can see, I've done an average of fairly non-padding fights. We've got a pure single target fight average here. We've got the overall average of absolutely everything in the entire raid, and I've put it all into tier list and some groovy bar charts for you. Now, if you want quick access to this right now, all you gotta do is subscribe, go to my subscriber only video, and it's gonna be in the description just there along with all my other subscriber-only content like our comprehensive guide of the best add-ons of week orders for every single class in the game. But after you've done that, make sure to come back to the video because obviously there's some interesting things to talk about here. And there is some very important disclaimers that we have to talk about because obviously, as you can see, the first big one is Fire Mage being so incredibly better than the other specs. But trust me, guys, that is padding. That definitely is a little splash of smoke and mirrors. But nonetheless, what I have heard from the community is Fire Mage do get very, very good when they get better gear. I think the very interesting thing here is obviously Arms Warrior being so far up and being a very strong spec in Cataclysm. This is definitely a thing with 4.3 talents if you ask anyone who's played Cataclysm private servers. All of the plate DPS are always very, very good. And as you can see here, on a pure single target fight, Look how much the Shadow Priest crawls ahead of the other DPS. And also the Ellie Shaman. Now I have also talked to a few people on Discord about this because I thought it was a bit alarming that Shadow Priest was so high up on the meters. But Shadow Priest are definitely very, very strong on these pure single target fights. Unfortunately, the uh, Fury Warrior again. What a surprise. It's not looking great for people who like playing Fury Warrior. But... To give Fury Warriors a little bit of hope, when you do look at Dragon Soul raid footage from back in the day, and that is going to be 4.3 talents, the Fury Warrior is always one of the top tier DPS. So it's basically just going to be the same old story as every other expansion. It's a scaling specialization. And another oddball is the Subtlety Rogue. Okay, so I've heard that the Subtlety Rogue is very slept on. And when you do look at logs, you can see them keeping up with mid-tier DPS. 
So it will be interesting to see how that plays out, but you can't really get a lot of info on Subtea Road because basically barely anybody has any knowledge of it or plays it. And guys, feel free to criticize and scrutinize the absolute living hell out of all this information and this tier list in the comment section down below. Just remember that obviously, just remember that there's no real way of getting accurate information because at the end of the day, we don't have time machines yet that I'm aware of. But really, this is just my best attempt, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Anyway, until my next video, ciao.